Okay, so this project is, is going to be uh, phase five of this craft show uh, series that I am doing. So the craft show did get canceled. It was supposed to be uh, this past Saturday, uh, September 23rd, but we had a tropical storm come through, uh, Ophelia, and it kind of dropped a lot of rain on us, and it's still raining. So I got an extra week. It got moved to, uh, I believe, October 7th, so I have an extra two weeks to even build more product if I want to. Uh, but I don't know if I'm going to since I have other jobs in, in the works here. So, okay, so this we're just I'm going to start out. We're going to build two planters and one bench for this phase. Uh, the planters are something I don't do a lot. So the one's going to be a little bit bigger where the bottom shelf is going to be about 16 inches wide at the bottom to about 9 to 10 inches up the, at, at the top. Um, it's going to have about a 10 degree angle. And then the other one's going to be a little bit taller. So th that the first one's going to be about 34 inches high. The other one's going to be about 35 inches high. And that's going to be a prototype of, of a planter that my uh, wife's grandfather used to make. So they sent me a picture, or they sent me the actual planter, and I'm going to try to replicate that with the second planter. And that one's going to be a little higher, but a little uh, smaller. It's going to be about 10 inches wide at the very bottom to about uh, 6 inches high at the top. And that's also going to have about a 10-degree angle, uh, with the top is going to be about 10 inches wide um, total. So it's going to have a little top on it, but this won't have a bottom, it's going to just have some braces on the bottom. So this one we're just going to build up, the first one we're going to do is going to be the bigger one with the bottom shelf. I also built a bench for this uh, phase, but I already have a separate video for that, and I'll, I'll mark that at the end. I'll put a card in, and I'll put a link at the end of this video for that, that video that's out there. So this is going to mainly concentrate on these two planters. Uh, so here I'm just going to set um, a chamfer up. I'm just pulling out a old flush trim bit and I'm going to put uh, a chamfer bit in on my router table and I'm just going to finish building this, the first one up. And we're going to do the same steps for the other one. It's not going to be as detailed since we're going to do a lot of milling up ahead of time. So the uh, milling up is pretty much the same process. Miter saw, jointer, planer, tape saw. Uh, we're going to do both uh, mill up a lot of them at the same time. Uh, we're going to run a chamfer on each of the legs and framing pieces here. We're going to do a, a sanding up the 80 grit on this pine and poplar. Most of it will be pop, or pine and the shells will be poplar. So here we're going to set our angle here. So we're going to set it, uh, the, the taller one's going to be about a 15 degree angle and the, I'm sorry, the, the, the wider one will be a 15 degree angle and the, the more narrow one is going to be about a 10 degree angle. Uh, so we're just going to uh, use a miter saw here to cut our angles. Um, for the legs and also the frame pieces, that way everything matches up. Um, and we're going to use the extra cutoffs for these as help us uh, do, do our clamping up, so we can have that angle uh, pieces for our clamps. Since we don't have, I don't have miter clamps. So for any project, I like to lay everything out, kind of mark everything with pencil uh, that we're going to sand off later. That's why I do a very uh, rough sanding to start out. So for the wider table, we're going to use pocket holes. We're going to use one pocket hole per joint, uh, and then we're going to also use some glue. And we're also going to throw some trim head screws in later, um, especially on the on the on the uh, the bottom braces for holding the shelves, and also the top um, long braces. So we're going to use uh, trim head screws and glue. And pocket screws for, for this joinery. No, it's not a, a stool, but I was able to sit on it. So, I mean, but it's kind, of, it's kind of the same concept as a stool here. So, we're just going to make sure all of our measurements are correct, we're laying out everything correct, try to get everything as flush as possible. It's, it's really hard sometimes to get these angle joints perfect, even with these cutoffs we're utilizing here. Um, there's still sometimes little gaps here, and especially with this frame and lumber. It's just not 100% uh, perfect, especially, and also using pocket screws. If I probably use the dominoes, uh, I'll probably make it worth it. But since I'm selling these things very cheap, uh, for like 35 to 40 bucks each, um, I didn't want to put too much time in um, labor into these because it really would be cost ineffective then because I would have to sell them for, say, 100 bucks. Um, if these were harder wood, I probably would 
and I, maybe I will do a, a, a higher lip, uh, end line of this, which I normally do with my furniture. I'll have a higher end line of furniture with more hardwoods, a little more expensive, a little better joinery, things of that nature, uh, better finishes. Uh, then I have the lower end, which is still great, great furniture, but it's a little more reasonable, cheaper, uh, more rustic farmhouse. And that's very popular also. So we're just going to assemble everything. We're going to use the pocket holes. I'm gluing and clamping everything first and let it sit for a couple minutes so the wood doesn't slide on me um, as much. Sometimes wood, especially with pocket joints, uh, will slide um, a little bit as you're screwing them in. So the glue is kind of holding them in with the clamps and these, uh, like I said, these cutoff uh, braces um, that we're utilizing from the extra cutoffs when we cut our miters. So I'm going to assemble this, and um, and I'm, if you notice, I'm going to offset. Well, I offset the pocket hole a little bit, so I have a little room to put a trim head screw in from the leg end uh, after we assemble these. So, and that's what we're going to do now. We're going to countersink. Uh, we're going to run a little trim head screw. The the, the good part uh, with this is it makes it stronger. The bad part, uh, is especially with the pocket hole, I didn't use pocket uh, Craig screws. I used um, more of a construction type screw, a little stronger, a little thicker diameter. Um, a little longer just so it'll hold it better and um, the good part with that it makes it stronger bad part it, it can split your pine uh, since pine's so soft so you got to be careful it didn't have a couple little you know nicks in it but it, it's holding holding well and we're going to like we're going to finish this and sand it down so here we're going to put our trim head screws in um, so they don't run into our pocket hole screw so that's why we're offsetting it and we're just going to do a final assembly of everything and we're also going to do the uh, other uh, planner next which is going to be the same concept except this I'm not going to use pocket holes I'm going to just use uh, brad nails and trim head screws with glue so here we're just going to mount the top uh, get everything lined up um, let's take our time here it's, this is the difficult part at the top because it's really tight now so I really have to get get my tools in there use an extension on the uh, on the impact driver here and just get it all put together and it came together pretty nice um, a couple little nicks here and there um, with the screws. Um, and I'm going to fill in the holes uh, with some dowels and glue. So here I'm just going to countersink some holes in the in the top of the or the bottom of the top uh, stretchers and aprons here, and we're going to, to use that for uh, the mount the top. We're not going to use tabletop fasteners. This is going to be something that's going to be held in place. And it's going to be one piece of wood. So now we're putting the bottom brackets into because this is going to have a bottom shelf. This one, and that will be a popper shelf. Uh, there'll be slat shelves. Okay, so also keep in mind, these projects that we're doing in these five series so far have been all cut off wood scraps uh, from other projects that I, a lot of it I probably would have burned. So this popper here we're putting in is just old popper I had from other projects. So to keep, keep that in mind, so that's what this whole idea, that's why I'm doing this craft fair, otherwise I probably wouldn't be doing it. So here we're running a fortunate bit where we countersinked earlier and we're going to put some three inch dails in with some glue. We just tap them in and then we're going to cut them off with our Japanese uh, pull saw here, uh, clean them up and then we're also going to prepare uh, the top. Um, we're going to do a little sanding for that and run a uh, chamfer. We're going to sand the whole unit down um, also and then we're going to run a chamfer on the bottom of the top of this top piece and then we're just going to mount this top and then we're going to start on our next uh, planter. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, so we're cleaning up this uh, planer here and we're gonna run a chamfer on the bottom of the feet here just to keep from scraping. So now we're gonna start on this second planter. So a lot of this wood has kind of been milled up to a certain extent. So we're gonna cut this on the table salt to the final uh, width and then we're gonna run through the uh, planer, uh, get the final thickness. These are gonna be thin pieces of pine. It's gonna match almost identical to the planter that my wife's grandfather used to make. So I'm trying to uh, keep it uh, very, very similar. And this I'll probably uh, will be given away to uh, my wife's family, um, and, and but I will bring it to the show as a, as a prototype, uh, or you know we'll at least have this template to build for future. And that's what I normally do. I use try to keep it uh, templates for it, and then we'll we, that way we can build them faster. So you can see here we're just using a stop lot of uh, miter sole seam steps is the last one. Except this one's going to be a ten degree angle. It's going to be more narrow um, uh, planter. And it's going to be a little higher. So and it's good. So the wood is also a lot thinner. So we're going to just use, like I said, uh, brad nails, glue, and some trim head screws for, for this uh, uh, build. As, as you can see here, we're going to start here, and we're going to use the cutoffs, like I said earlier, that we did for the other uh, planter. So this is the top. We're going to just miter these. These are 45 degree miters, miters here for the top. We're just going to make a little box here, and then we're going to put the legs inside here, and then put other pieces of wood inside there, and the legs to hold them as braces. So, and we're just going to brad nail that and screw them in. Okay, so typically I would use a pin nailer for this, but uh, my air pressure isn't working right now, so I don't have a battery operated pin nailer. So we're going to use a brad nail with one inch screws, 18 gauge uh, brad, brad. So it's a little, it's a little stronger, but it's also a little more dangerous when you do it that way because, you know, you can split your wood. So here we're just going to use a, um, a flathead screwdriver here to burnish our edges on the miter. It's a little trick uh, to close any gaps. So now we're going to flip back over uh, right side, uh, the top facing down, and we're going to mount the legs into the, the bottoms, uh, or I'm sorry, into the tops. And we're also going to put some wood there to hold them as braces with uh, brad nails and uh, countersink uh, trim head screws. So now we flip back over. It's coming out pretty nice. We're just going to put the bottom braces on. Everything seems very level and straight which is good and we're just going to uh, use like I said glue and brad nails and then some trim head screws um, if need be for the for the bottom braces this is not going to be holding anything this is holding the legs at the 10 degree angle that's all these are really doing is the hold for support but they're not really bearing any weight uh, since there's not going to be any shelf on the bottom so here we're just going to sand this down clean it up um, using the Milwaukee detail sander here which is one of my favorite tools this sander is a great tool for projects like this tight spaces uh, thin diameter wood and we're just going to sand it down get the top ready uh, with a chamfer um, on the bottoms and tops of the top on all three uh, pieces actually and we're going to uh, just sand it down to about 120 grit and we're going to mount the tops uh, for both planters and the uh, bench at the same time here and we're just going to use the same concept we're just going to um, we're just going to countersink and screw them in right to the frame uh, but we're going to um, when I countersink I make the holes a little uh, the diameter a little wider to give the screw a little room to, to move around especially these little trim head screws so here's the the, the first uh stool here or, i'm sorry planer and we're just going to mount the bottom shelves in this poplar with um the brad nails remember all this lumber is is been is cutoffs and leftovers from other projects so we're just um we're utilizing everything we would probably would burn in the Otherwise, or use, you know, I would eventually probably use some of it, but a lot of it I probably would have burned, especially the pine poplar. Uh, I, I do burn a lot of that. So, like I said, we're just going to mount everything. Everything is done. came out well, pretty nice, this bench. I have a separate video for this. Uh, I'll put a description at the end. Um, so, this this uh, phase five is two planters and one uh, bench. It took me about, a, maybe about a day or so to do all three, you know, also working with other stuff. So, I don't really have a, you know, accurate labor charge for this but here's the total profits right now the new profits with this is about 120 dollars hopefully and so we'll take the total up to 1004 dollars and i did sell one cutting board already that i had marked for this craft fair somebody uh, hit me off hit me up off the website and um uh, came and picked one up so that's a minus 85 dollars already um profit you know, and that's kind of what i wanted for 85 to 100 hours um but I'm, I'm willing to sell these um i'm just going to get rid of them 
Um, so I'm not really going to haggle price too much. So here they are. Here are the planters. They came out really uh, nice, in my opinion. Um, you know, this is my first time building planters. Uh, but it's the same concept as a stool for me, but it's a little not as sturdy. Uh, even though this one was pretty pretty sturdy, I was able to sit on this one. The other one I probably wouldn't because uh, it's, it's such a thin diameter. So this is it. They're pretty much done. We're ready to go for this. Or I'm going to probably build a couple more since the, um, the craft show got canceled. Um, so we're going to... Uh, Build some more. Thanks for watching.